All right, welcome to Unit 5 on Sampling Distributions. In this video, we are going to look at an example problem for Topic 5.8, Sampling Distributions for Differences in Sample Means. All right, so hopefully you've already learned about all this, and now we can just dive right into a problem. So here we go. In Canada, the mean height of all men is 174 centimeters with a standard deviation of 7.2 centimeters. In Sweden, the mean height of all men is 180 centimeters with a standard deviation of 6.4 centimeters. If a random sample of 50 Canadian men and a random sample of 35 Swedish men were found, describe the sampling distribution. So one thing I like to do before I get started on any of these problems is get all my numbers organized because there is a lot of numbers in this problem. So first, I'm going to use CAN as my little um, prefix or my little subscript for Canadian and SWE for Swedish men. So the mean for the Canadian was 174, standard deviation 7.2, and the sample size for the Canadian men was 50. And then for the Swedish men, the mean was 180, standard deviation 6.4, and the sample size I'm going to look at for Swedish men was 35. So what I want to do is I want to build a sampling distribution to show you all possible differences between a sample of 55 Canadian men and 35 Swedish men. Now, it all starts with understanding the center. What would the mean of all those possible differences be, right? If I took a sample of Swedish men and a sample of Canadian men, boy, I could get a whole lot of different um, differences, right? But the mean of all of them should be the truth, right? If the true um, average for Swedish men is 180, Canadian men 174, there should be a difference of six centimeters. That should be what the difference is, right? But listen, I know that not every sample is going to, not every two samples are going to have that difference. I can get a sample of 35 Swedish men and I can get a sample for the Canadian men and I might get a difference of, you know, five centimeters or four centimeters or 6.2 centimeters. You know, there's going to be a lot of possible differences out there. The mean of all of them, which is what this symbol is showing us, should be the truth as long as our samples are selected randomly to avoid being biased. The moment you consistently do not get the truth is when you end up being biased. All right. So uh, the other thing I want to point out is that I specifically went Swedish minus Canadian because I wanted to get a positive differences. In my mind, I like positive differences. I could have done it in the other order and got a negative difference. But what's most important that you understand is that the six centimeter is in favor of Swedish men. Okay, it's in favor of the Swedish men. They are typically going to be taller. All right, next up comes the standard deviation because of what I just got done explaining, right? I expect to get a difference of six, but it could be more, it could be less. So here is the standard deviation for the difference. And again, notice what I'm doing here, taking the standard deviation for the Swedish men, 6.4, squaring it, dividing it by the 35 Swedish men in my sample. 7.2 squared, that was the standard deviation for Canadian men, dividing that by 50. All right, number one error that kids make is they forget to square those two numbers on top. And I do want to say this, you don't actually have to square it. I mean, you do square it, but you don't have to actually write down what 6.4 squared is. Just put the little square on it. Your calculator is going to do all the heavy lifting for you. All right, the other thing that a lot of kids do is they accidentally flip-flop the 35 and the 50. So that's why having a kind of a little table here organized, and that way you remember, hey, 50 is for the Canadian. So the 50 needs to go at the 7.2. 35 needs to go at the 6.4. That way you don't accidentally mess those numbers up. All right, and the third mistake I told you guys to watch out for is some kids will accidentally use the means of 180 and 174 in this formula. No, use the standard deviations in this formula. But again, I cannot use this formula. I mean, mathematically, I can calculate this formula, but I cannot use it until I am sure that my samples are independent of each other. So that means that both samples, the 35 men from Canada, 35 has to be under 10% of all Canadian men, which I'm pretty sure it is. There's millions of Canadian men. And 35 Swedish men needs to be under 10% of all men in Sweden, which again, million in Sweden. So I'm pretty sure that that's going to be true. All right. Now, the shape is, of course, going to be normal, but how do I know that? Because I never once said that the populations were normal. To be honest, typically height does follow a normal distribution, but if you're not told that, you don't know. So this is where we do need the central limit theorem. Both samples are 30 or larger, 35 for the Swedish men, 50 for the Canadian men. So both samples are 30 or larger. So the central limit theorem says to look at their difference, it will follow a normal model. All right, now I could literally put all three pieces together and make a nice little um, kind of picture here. So I got six right smack dab in the center because that's the difference I'd expect. I went up, 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 down, 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 a standard deviation on each side, all right? So before we ask you any questions, I want to notice a couple things here. First off, 
the zero, right? Zero would mean that there is no difference. That falls way down here somewhere, which means that having a sample of Canadians be bigger than Sweden's, again, think about that, that would produce a negative difference. If the Canadian sample was bigger than Sweden's, that would produce a negative difference. According to my model, that's going to be pretty darn unlikely. In fact, that's a question I'm going to have for you later. All right, but the first question I have for you is what is the probability that a sample of Swedish males is more than nine centimeters taller than a sample of Canadian males? All right, so remember, I did in the order Swedish men minus Canadian men, and I'm looking for this difference to be greater than or equal to nine. Now, technically, the normal model doesn't differentiate between greater than or greater than or equal to, because remember, the one thing the normal model cannot do is calculate exact probabilities of single events anyway. So I'm trying to find the probability that a difference between a sample mean of Swedish men and Canadian men is greater than or equal to 9. To do that, I need to first find the z-score. That way I could use normal CDF on my calculator. So the z-score is going to be taking that difference of 9 minus the difference of 6. That was the mean. That was what I expected. Divided by the standard deviation of 1.4856. I do want to confirm. Yep, 1.4856. So I'm going to grab my calculator, do the 9.6 first, or you can even do that in your head and just say that you know that that's 3. Then divide 3 by 1.4856, and you get a standard deviation of 2.019, if you round it correctly, 4. All right, so now asking the question about a difference being greater than 9 is equivalent to asking about a z-score being greater than or equal to 2.0194. To do that on my calculator, I am going to need normal CDF, and I'm going to start at that z-score, and I'm going to go all the way towards infinity, which on my calculator, I don't have an infinity, but I'm going to use 99. Mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. So if you do that on your calculator, this, you know, once you understand the process here, and I hope we've been doing this enough that you do, it becomes very, very fast to find these probabilities. It is 0.0. Two one seven. So about a 2.2% chance that the sample from Sweden comes back 9 centimeters or more than the sample from Canada. All right, one more question here. And this is the question I kind of alluded to earlier. What is the probability that a sample of Canadian males is taller than a sample of Swedish males? Well, I built my entire model on the idea of looking at the Swedish mean minus the Canadian mean. So I have to understand that if I'm looking for the Canadian mean to be bigger, that means I'm looking for a difference to be less than zero. Because if I'm less than zero, boom, the only way that can happen is if the Canadian sample was bigger. So I'm trying to find the probability that the sample from Sweden minus the sample from Canada is less than zero. So to do that, I do need to find a z-score, so that way I can use normal CDF to look below it. So I do need to find the z-score for 0, and I'm going to subtract the mean of 6, and I'm going to because that's what I expect, right? There should be a 6 centimeter difference. And I'm going to divide that by 1.4856, the standard deviation for my samples. So again, do the top first, whether you do it on your calculator or you do it in your head, negative 6. Then divide the negative 6 by 1.4856, and I'll get a very low z-score, negative 4.0388. So again, this would be very, very unlikely to happen, but I do need to prove that. So in, it, in the question, it did say find the probability. So I'm going to look at below that z-score. And to do that, I am going to need normal CDF on my calculator. So I'm showing all my work here. I'm going to start at negative infinity. That's really, really low. I'm going to go to negative 4.0388 with a mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. That's my generic um, normal standard deviation mean and standard deviation. So now I'm going to go negative 99. Remember, we don't have a negative infinity on our calculator. to negative 4.0388. And I get a very, very low probability. Make sure you know how to read scientific notation. But don't ever put an answer in scientific notation. The probability is 0 0.000027. So a very, very low probability. In fact, if a sample of Canadians did come back bigger than a sample of Sweden's, I would be very surprised. I think I would be, I would think I would find that very significant. Again, why would I say that, that would be a significant thing? Because the probability of that difference occurring or lower or even more negative would be very, very unlikely, well under one or 5%.
So that's it, guys. That's a really quick example of how to do all this. Um, you know, this is really the fourth time around that you've been doing this, this, this concept, these ideas. So hopefully it's all starting to sink in and these problems are becoming easy and easier for you. All right, guys, that's it for this video.